Hi, Frederick from Immersive Sound Tech. A special shout out to all you headphone freaks out there. I immensely enjoy all the comments and uh, tricky questions that you are sending to me in the comments of my videos. Today, I'm going to tell you what you want to know. Which of these three wireless headphones sound the best to me? We got the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 coming in at about 700 euros. We got the Focal Batiste at 800 euros. And we have the Mark Levinson 5909 costing 1,000 euros. Which one of these three sound the best? Stick around and I will let you know. So here we are, three wireless headphones and only one winner, I think. Let's see. So we have the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 with carbon coated elements, cones. We have the Focal Batiste with magnesium aluminum cones. And we have the Mark Levinson's with beryllium coated cones. So three pair of headphones and I'm just gonna briefly go through the features and uh, if you're interested in the nitty-gritty details of each headphones I have made rather comprehensive uh, reviews videos that's available on my channel so check them out as well after you watch this video that is so let's talk about the Bauer & Wilkins I really like these headphones. They, they, they fit my head really well. And I use them when I uh, move my lawn, when I do vacuum cleaning. And I have to say that I also use them at bed, just lying down listening to music, because they fit my head so well and have a rather nice sound. More about the sound later. Uh, their their uh, cones are carbon-based. And uh, the specs of these headphones uh, is that they play 44.1 and 48 kilohertz 24-bit sound. Um, and we have the Focal Batiste with their magnesium aluminum uh, cones. And these headphones actually play up to or support up to 192 kilohertz 24-bit uh, sound. And uh, I also like these headphones a lot. Uh, I use them when I do editing, but more on that later. Um, and finally, the Mark Levinson's. The, these are really comfortable headphones, uh, sitting nicely over my head. Uh, the beryllium coated cones play all the way up to 40 kilohertz, which, which is quite impressive for a pair of headphones. And uh, these headphones support 96, 20, 96 kilohertz 24 bit sound. So let's talk about the active noise cancelling of these headphones. Uh, the Bowers and Wilkins have one mode of uh, active noise cancelling, and then they have a pass through function that lets sound through from the outside, but in a controlled way. So if you see somebody talking to you, your spouse, you can quickly press the button on, on the, the left ear cap and uh, you will hear your spouse and will be able to react to his or her reaction or what they're saying. And, and uh, then you can also disable the no active noise cancelling. Uh, with the Mark Levinson, I believe they have three different levels of noise cancelling and also a pass-through functionality. Uh, and uh, the noise cancelling can also be disabled. Uh, with the Focal Batiste, have two levels of active noise cancelling, soft and more deep, uh, uh, depending on how much noise cancelling you need uh, at a certain location. However, 
it's not possible to disable the noise cancelling in these headphones, which is a shame because I would have loved to, to hear how they sound without any active noise cancelling. Because noise cancelling will always affect the sound quality of the music. So here are my short thoughts about the different noise cancelling in these headphones. I'm gonna start with the Batis. I find them really nice sounding with the noise cancelling because I've never heard them without the noise cancelling. I use it in the soft mode, just a little bit of noise cancelling. But if I'm uh, mowing my lawn, I can put it into the strong active noise cancelling and that works really well. Uh, there's also a pass-through uh, function where they let sound in from the outside. I, I think they have a rather good um, passive isolation just wearing the headphones. So let's wear these and, and, and just get a feel. They actually have a little bit more of passive isolation. <laughs> I can hear my, my own voice a little bit more when I speak, having these on uh, th through my head, so to speak. And, and with the Bowers & Wilkins, uh, also nice uh, isolation. So, so the passive isolation of these three headphones is, is actually good as it, as it is. So. How do I use the active noise cancelling? Well, let me tell you about the Bowers & Wilkins PX8. I recently, last week, made a work trip to the Middle East. Ended up at the Istanbul International Airport, running from one end of it to the other, missing my connecting flight due to delays. So, had to spend five hours at the airport had some kebab, drank some FS beer, listened to some really nice music through these. Kept me calm, <laughs> waiting five, five hours for my connecting flight. Eventually, I boarded the flight, put on the headphones, turned off the auto uh, off function, just set them to noise cancelling, slept like a baby for three and a half hours. That's how good the noise cancelling is, is in these headphones. Same thing on the trip back, going to Istanbul, had a long flight, slept for three hours straight. Just put them on, uh, set the noise cancelling, no music, slept like a baby. And from Istanbul to, to uh, Kastrup, Denmark, I think I slept for one and a half hours. You know, you wake up when the stewardess goes with you, just turns up to shout, oh, 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 thank you, because you've just fallen asleep. So, these headphones are really comfy. I find the noise cancelling really good, just about as much as needed. There are headphones with more noise cancelling, even stronger noise cancelling, but there's always a drawback with really, really strong active noise cancelling because it will affect the sound quality listening to music. And we're going to talk about the sound quality in a little bit. So, uh, the active noise cancelling of the Batiste, like it a lot too. I've had it for travels. These are a little bit bigger, uh, move around it just a little bit on my head. So, so, not quite as comfy as travel partners. Uh, but the sound quality and uh, noise cancelling is really good too. I, I enjoy it a lot. And, and um, so, so I would choose either of these for travel. Mostly these because they are a little bit smaller uh, on my head. A little bit easier to, to walk around with. A little bit firmer grip on my big potato head. So, how about the Mark Levinson? Well, they have three different levels of, of uh, active noise cancelling. It's possible to, to turn it off, just like with the Bowers & Wilkins. And with these headphones, I very much prefer listening to them without the active noise cancelling, because I think it affects the sound too much. The low end it gets 
there's a certain instability in the low end when the noise cancelling is activated. But most of all, around 10 kilohertz or something like that, there's an added intensity like a tsss, uh, that, I, that I don't fancy at all. It, it reveals them as, as headphones, so to speak. So, so with these headphones, active noise cancelling off. Also, when I turn on the active noise cancelling, there's a slight hiss. And it's only audible with the active noise cancelling on, which is quite strange. So, I really haven't tested these headphones much with, with, uh, with active noise cancelling, apart from when I did the comprehensive review. So these headphones are much better used as normal headphones. You put them on, you have the passive isolation for, for being sealed headphones and close back headphones, and that's it. Uh, so that's the active noise cancelling. Sound-wise, what happens to the sound? Well, the thing is with, with the Bowers & Wilkins PX8, I much prefer them with the active noise cancelling enabled because it inflates the sound stage, giving it a little bit more oomph. I guess it's due to the fact that active noise cancelling, one of the biggest jobs for active noise cancelling is to cancel out low frequency rumble. That's where the most sound energy is, hitting your ears or hitting your headphones and going through your headphones into your ear, ear canal. So that's where I also think it's most audible comparing different uh, headphones with active noise cancelling. Um, and what this does is that they inflate pfft, inflates the sound a little bit when the active noise cancelling is enabled. And I quite like it. Also, <clears throat> I should mention that after the latest update of the firmware in these headphones a couple of months ago, I discovered that they sounded even better. They had done something to the noise cancelling algorithm, but also the overall sound. Because before that firmware upgrade, there was quite a difference between the low end performance, the bass sound, uh, with and without the active noise cancelling. Without the noise cancelling, they sounded a little bit boring. At least when you, when you were able to compare them with the active noise cancelling. Now, they have evened out that gap a little bit. They sound better now in the low end without active noise cancelling, and they sound a little less inflated with the active noise cancelling. So I went from using them uh, with active noise cancelling and minus 2 dB bass, minus 2 dB low end in, in the filter settings. Now I, I went back to minus 1.5. So 1.5 less dB reduction, low, low end reduction. So I was really pleased to, to, to hear that. And you know, you, you, with your iPhone, you update your apps every three months. And then I turned on the, the Bowers & Wilkins app, which is a really nice app with, with a media player inside, media player inside. And, and, uh, and he said, yeah, you need to update your headphones. Yeah, so, so I did. I didn't think much of it, and I actually didn't use them after that. I just, I don't know, I just updated them. Then I, then I used them, and it sort of grew on me. Hey, wait a minute, they fixed the low end. So anyway, so, so that's a good thing. Thank you, Bowers & Wilkins, for improving the sound. So I really like listening to this with active noise cancelling. Um, and the active noise cancelling is really good. It's good enough, at least to put me to sleep for three and a half hours on, on a really busy Turkish Airways uh, flight, night flight. Anyway, the, the Focal Batis, what I like with the active noise cancelling of these is that the difference between the soft and the deep mode, where it's the strong active noise cancelling, the difference in sound quality is not that audible. It's a little bit 
constraining the sound stage. But overall, I really like the active noise cancelling of these headphones and I really can't tell how they sound without because it's not possible to disable it 100%. And, and um, I really like the sound stage and uh, these are also really nice using talking on the phone. Also, same thing with these. I updated the firmware, you know, just updated it. Then I just saw in the app that, hey, wait a minute, they've added features. So they added a side tone uh, functionality. So when you have these headphones on and you take a phone call, they will actually mix back a little bit of your own voice. So it's, it sounds slightly more like a normal phone call where you hear your own voice and you hear the person that you're speaking to. Uh, they could have added a little bit more side tone uh, for my taste, but anyway, it's just, it's just nice that when you take a call, you're not speaking in a vacuum, just in, into a dark vacuum because of the noise cancelling and, and uh, just gives a little bit of open presentation. So that was the noise cancelling of these three headphones. Very capable, all three of them. Mark Levinson, much prefer them without the active noise cancelling. The other two headphones might be fine to use the active noise cancelling. It doesn't uh, uh, affect the sound stage too much. And in fact, with the Powers and Wilkins, it actually kind of enhances it. So, uh, a little bit of connectivity. Uh, which of these headphones are, have the best connectivity? Well, it is the, the uh, Focal Batis, because these have a, they have a, a wireless mode, but they also have a DAC mode, a digital audio converter mode. So, I can connect a USB-C cable and connect it to my laptop and I will have wired sound quality. It becomes a sound card. Uh, the other headphones can do that as well, but the difference is that with these, I can actually connect them to my iPhone using an Apple uh, camera adapter USB thingy. There are other cables available to do that as well. So uh, that's the cool thing. I know in my review, uh, I didn't try it out properly, so I'm, I said that it wasn't possible to, to hook up to an iPhone, but there is. So if you want the highest quality, not using the Bluetooth connectivity, it is possible to do uh, with uh, the Focal Batiste on an iPhone. All three headphones, connecting them to an Android phone using a USB-C cable, produces a drop in sound level of about 12 dB or something like that. Almost not usable. So they lose a lot of sound level when connected to an Android phone via USB-C cable. I don't know why. Uh, uh, my guess is that it's some kind of, of uh, Android uh, OS uh, thingy doing that. So, uh, so for the best connectivity, the Focal Batis. I use it with my laptop. I, I use them with my laptop uh, when I edit my videos on the go. Just hook them up, hook up a USB-C cable, put it in DAC mode, and they sound fantastic. No Bluetooth cloudy sound, so to speak. So let's talk about Bluetooth connectivity and sound quality. All three headphones are compatible with aptX codecs, the adapter codec, the HD codec. They are uh, compatible with Apple's AAC codecs used in iPhones. And uh, the Mark Levinson are also Sony LDAC compatible. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. So using these headphones with an iPhone my guess, I can see with the Focal Batis because it says in the app that they connect with the AAC codec and I'm pretty sure that the other headphones do as well. It's hard to tell with Apple products because you simply don't know what happens inside an iPhone or a MacBook or iPad or whatever. Anything Apple is so, it's so closed community, closed uh, programming that... But anyway, 
So uh, they connect with, with an iPhone. And how do they sound? I think that all three sound just about fine. I know that there's this discussion on headphone forums that, uh, oh, I can't listen to them on the Bluetooth, sounds like crap, and it's so much better hooking them up with the cable. Yes, you can hook up all these three headphones via cable, via analog mini jack cable and via USB-C cable to a laptop. But that's not the way they are designed and intended to be used. These are wireless headphones. They are designed for you, for your convenience, to use on the go, at the office, sleeping uh, on a night flight from Istanbul. And that's the way you should use them. There is a difference in sound quality for sure, but I don't believe it's that obvious. And putting on my sound engineer cap, I, I just tremendously enjoy using these headphones wirelessly. I really do. And so the sound quality, uh, the, the Focal Batiste, so I'm going to bake this together with, with the Bluetooth connectivity and the sound quality. The Focal Batiste, to me, with my sound engineer cap on, and as a music lover, these are the best sounding headphones of this trio. Uh, because these produce a huge, very comprehensive sound stage that just does it for me. They almost doesn't sound like headphones. Focal has, has done a, a great job voicing these headphones. And due to the fact that they're active, I, I'm pretty much sure that they have done face correction in the low end because it sits together so well with the rest of the frequency spectrum. So, so um, for mixing music, uh, for making my videos on the fly, just hooking up a cable to my laptop, editing my stuff, and just listening to music, I tremendously enjoy these headphones. These are the best sounding headphones of, of the, these three, to me. Well worth a listen. Uh, the Mark Levensons. The thing is with these headphones, and, and I should mention that these are the only headphones of this three trio that actually can be used passively. You can hook up uh, a special cable, but an analog cable yeah, that ends up a, a mini jack that you can hook up to, to a headphone amp. Uh, or even your phone, uh, actually, coming to think of it. And, and then there are passive headphones. No um, uh, power needed if you run out of battery. But that's not the way to use these headphones because uh, passively and without any filtering, they are rather bass shy. To me, I love bass, I love low end. That's why I have two huge subwoofers here in my control room <laughs> and big speakers. <laughs> but uh, you really need to enable the low end boost uh, in the Mark Levinson app to make this sound warm and, and uh, hefty and nice in the low end. So, uh, and that's a problem with these headphones because when you have that low end enabled and you activate the active noise cancelling, it's processing on processing. And if you listen loud or when I listen loud to music, uh, and loud isn't super loud, like 85, like 90 uh, SPL or something like that, 85, 90 SPL, chances are that these will distort in the low end. And it's processing distortion, I think. Uh, the, 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 the cones can handle it. It's something in the processing that just isn't trimmed the way it should be. Hopefully it can be fixed in an upgrade or of the firmware, I don't know. So with these headphones, you have to have, at least to me, you have to have the low end boosted and uh, I much prefer them without noise cancelling or activated 
because then they don't distort in the low end as easily. Also, this headphone doesn't play quite as loud as the other two do. Is that, is that a problem? Not if you're listening to pop music or modern super compressed <laughs> music that just goes <laughs> uh, like most music is. But if you listen to classic music uh, with uh, tons of dynamic classical music or very soft jazz, chances are that the, the maximum volume will be just a little bit too low in these headphones. Uh, that said, uh, these play up to 40 kilohertz. <laughs> I think my, my hearing rolls off, off at 15,500 or something like that <laughs> the last time I checked. But <laughs> the speakers behind me play all the way up to, to 100 kilohertz. Uh, because they're TAD speakers with beryllium um, cones. These have beryllium coated cones, so they play all the way up to 40 kilohertz. Is that needed? No. Will there be any sound up there <laughs> when sent from an iPhone uh, to these headphones via Bluetooth? Hell no, it won't. But anyway, it shows the quality of, of these cones. Uh, and. Uh, of, of the three, I think that these sound the best in the upper mid-range. They have a really open upper mid-range, or sound the best. They rather sound the most up there. So they are super detailed in the upper mid-range, more so than the Focal Batiste, and definitely more than the, the Bowers & Wilkins. So where would I use these? Well. If I'm sitting in my Sunday in the sofa place and uh, just in the evening, just listening very softly to music, I would probably prefer these. They have a really nice sound stage. That upper mid range, um, I want to say intensity, but, but clarity, upper mid range clarity is really nice. So, in, in that way, these are really nice sounding headphones. And it's all down to taste. Uh, and, and, and these are just my opinions. Your opinions might, di might differ. You might already use these and love them. And I certainly understand that. <laughs> the Bowers & Wilkins, this is interesting because um, I just like how these sound. Um, they, they haven't got the same sound stage or depth as the other two contenders, but instead, not having that depth means that they produce a little bit more intimacy in the music. Vocals move for forward a little bit, might not sound as natural as with the Mark Levinson or the Foucault Matisse, but laying in bed, just listening to a bit of music, I really like how these sound. And with the latest firmware, I'm pretty sure that they've made them to sound just a tiny bit smoother than, than before. So, so I'm rather torn uh, between the, the Matisse and the, and the Bowers and Wilkins, because I love them both. Uh, I wouldn't trade any of them, actually, spoiler alert. Uh, and I own them both, so lucky me. <laughs> but but they, they are both well worth a try. And also, I just want to mention something about these, because I've, I've read reviews, I've read comments, uh, and I've uh, even watched uh, YouTube reviews where they say that these sound harsh and, and slightly boomy in the low end. And you're right, they do, when they haven't been properly broken in. Straight out of the box, yes, they sounded a bit harsh, in the upper mid-range and with a slightly dis detached, boomy low end. 500 hours later, laying here in my control room, playing on the floor <laughs> around the clock, they sound much nicer. So don't believe those comments. Do your own testing before uh, ruling these out. So that, that's my thoughts about these three headphones. I should also mention with the Mark Levinsons that connected to a Android phone, they support the Sony LDAC codec. Mmm, Sony LDAC. Ooh, 
how does that sound? It sounds amazing. It's almost like a straight wire. And I mean, the, the, the bandwidth is almost a thousand kilobit per sec. And sending 44.116 bit sound is like uh, 1500 kilobit per sec or so. So they almost send or receive a linear sound. Uh, is that audible? Hell yes, I really like it. So if you're on an Android phone, uh, uh, these, uh, with these headphones, you will be able to use the Sony LDAC codec. Will that ever happen to the other two headphones? Or will that ever happen on an iPhone? Probably not. Uh, we are stuck with the AAC codec at 256 kilobit, I guess. There is support up to 320 kilobit per sec also, but I don't know if they really um, use that bandwidth. I, my guess is that they connect at 256 kilobit per sec. If, if you know for a fact that there's another bandwidth used, please put it in the comment. But that with my findings, what I found out so far, uh, having used these headphones for, for these for a year, uh, and that one's for more than half a year. So, coming to the conclusion of uh, using these headphones for quite some time now. Uh, like I said, I really, really like these two head pair of headphones. I wouldn't trade either of them. I use these for editing, for uh, mixing music on the fly. I use these for travel. Uh, and laying in bed when I want that intimate sound. Might not be as uh, transparent, but it, it's an intimacy and they just fit really well on my head and, and they take up a little bit less space around my pillow. So, and with the Mark Levinson, the odd cat in the team, the most expensive headphones. Well, they don't quite live up to my expectations when it comes to the active noise cancelling or the, the overall uh, usability. Still, they are really nice sounding headphones and who knows, they might be the perfect headphones for you and for your hearing and for your head. So my suggestion is that you head out to your local hi-fi store, well-sorted hi-fi store, and try out all three models. So, those are my thoughts about these three headphones, head to head. Price, sound quality, active noise cancelling, comfiness, usability, just your overall user experience. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider con uh, subscribing to my channel, hit that little notification bell, and uh, thanks for watching Immersive Soundtech your Sunday in the sofa place.